This is my uh, FR38 frequency counter. It represents about the height of 1960 technology where vacuum tubes were used in digital devices just before the advent of solid state electronics. This unit has about 80 tubes that it uses in order to carry out its function. Primary to that are six displays. Each display has 10 neon tubes labeled 0 through 9 and four binary counters. A real helpful thing for working on something like this is to have a pretty good dual trace uh, digital oscilloscope. A lot of time was spent looking at MMVs and other devices inside the counter. This gives you kind of an idea of what construction technique was used in building this device. Let's look at the front of the counter. First thing is the function selector that selects whether you're reading period, frequency, or in the self-check mode. Then there's a resolution control that sets how many digits you're reading on frequency when you're reading the frequency. And last is the time unit display and there's a calibrated time output and this selects what's on that output. There are six columns or six displays that display the frequency on the column. That along with two analog meters, they display the last two digits of the frequency. In the center of the unit is the heterodyne converter. This allows the 10 MHz base unit of the counter to be extended up to 100 MHz by heterodyning all incoming signals against an oscillator down to a 10 MHz base band. Let's go ahead and start looking at the counter. We'll look at the 100 KC reference pulse first. And we'll see with the newer counter that we're right at about 100 KC. Give or take a fraction of a cycle. Now what we'll do is move the uh, frequency counter over to the reference outputs and we'll look at some of the timing references that the counter provides which are selected by the time unit. We could read the 100 KC reference or the 10 megahertz reference oscillator that's in the counter. Now we'll go ahead and uh, do the self checks in the counter. First one is we'll go to the 100 KC check and we'll see that it's reading right at 100 KC. Then we'll go and check it at 10 megahertz. And you'll see the counter is now reading 10 megahertz. So it looks like we passed the two self checks. We'll go back to frequency, reconfigure over the input of the counter change the configuration around so we could have one signal source feed both counters simultaneously. Just do that with a T connector. We'll go ahead and set the signal source for 52.250 megahertz. Check it on the new counter. Tune the magic eye tube so it's peaked right where it winks. And then read the frequency. So you don't see the 5 because you have to add that to it from the time base, but we're reading 2250.3. So when you add 50 to that, that comes out to 52250.4. We could change the resolution. So now it's 52250. So that is how you read frequency on this, and it's saying 52.250.4. So that pretty much concludes the tour of the FR38B. Gives you kind of an idea of how frequency was measured on the very first generation of digital vacuum tube frequency counters.